I'm River Rube, and welcome to my gun kingdom. Okay, so we're out here at the 200 yard range today and we're shooting the Marlin 3030. Now it is America's most popular deer hunting cartridge and also um, it has maintained that reputation for over 125 years and it still holds the record for the most deer taken. So what we're going to do today is um, we already did a video um, zeroing uh, the rifle in at uh, 50 yards and that's what the manufacturer the scope recommends and we did that with the highest power okay so we're all zeroed in at 50 yards and since the 3030 is one of the fastest and one of the most flattest trajectory shooting gun we're just gonna go right into the 200 yard range and see how we do now what are we shooting? Well, we're gonna be shooting the Lever Revolution by Hordenby. And now this is 160 grain. And like I said in the previous video, uh, they have the highest BC um, any bullet for the 3030. Um, they've perfected it. And so these things are really flat shooting. Um, they're very aerodynamic and much better than the Remington. Now these are a good choice if you can't get the um, the Hordendy Lever Revolution. Uh, these are safe also to load. You know the Hordendy has the uh, flex tip, so they're safe to load in the uh, lever lever guns. But um, Remington just makes their their tip round, uh, which is still safe to load. And I recommend if you're gonna shoot deer with the Remington is go to the 150 grain. Uh, the 170 grain, which we have here today, it's mainly for moose, larger game. So um, I have taken quite a few moose and my dad has also taken quite a few moose with the uh, Remington um, 170 grain. So that's what I would recommend if you're gonna go like to Canada and hunt moose. But if you're hunting deer here in the States, your 160 grain by Hordendy, the flex tip FTX is, is your best choice, okay? It, it's, it's one of the best. You can't go wrong with it. So what we'll do is we'll start out um, shooting the Remington first, and then we'll go to the uh, Hordendy, all right? And um, now, if you watch the first video uh, with the 3030, um, you notice that the at 50 yards we had a bullet rise with the uh, Hordendy, okay, which was you know I was pretty much uh, thinking that's what was going to happen, and uh, so we're going to see how much drop it has at 200 yards, and we'll start out with the Remington first, but um, yeah, so. Let's go over this gun real quick here. Now we already talked about it in the first video, but this gun is set up for hunting. It has no recoil pad. You don't need a recoil pad on a hunting gun uh, because you've got a lot of winter clothes on and, they're, and winter clothes are usually thick. And you're so excited, you know, when you take a shot at a deer anyway, you're not gonna feel the recoil anyway. So you wanna stay away from a recoil pad on a hunting gun. It just shoulders so much faster with all your winter clothes on too. It just, the recoil pad just sticks out too far and, and it can grab a hold of your clothing and stuff. Or this just slides on the clothing a lot easier. Now, this is a 1979 Marlin 3030. It has a, a three by nine scope on it. And also it has the sight through uh, rings on it. Some people have written in on my comments and said they didn't like these sights, but this is a hunting gun. They're, it's not supposed to look pretty. It's supposed to be functional, all right? So if you lose your scope for whatever reason, maybe it's raining real hard or it's misty, whatever, or it fogs up, and I know there's anti-fog stuff you can put on the lens, but the stuff I've tried never seemed to work. 
and if I wouldn't have had these see-through rings I would have missed three dough in my life so I had to go to the iron sights when when the scope failed me and another thing the scopes can always break you could drop the gun and you could also uh, bump it up against a tree and, and set set it off alignment so your best bet is to mount the scope with the sight through rings on, on a hunting gun. Okay, don't worry about how pretty it is or anything like that. It just has to be functional, all right? So um, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get ready here. And uh, now let's talk about the lead sleds too. Uh, I've had some questions about that, how much weight you should put in a lead sled. Well, the manufacturer suggests that you don't go any heavier than 25 pound okay so i have a bag of shot in here and the bag of shot weighs exactly 25 pounds if you go more than that you're taking a chance of cracking your stock if you have a wood stock okay so and, and this is a jm stamped uh, marlin so uh, 1979 and it's 99 percent on the bluing and 99 percent on the stock so we want to take good care of it but so anyway um, and also when you zero your rifle in just like we did at the 50 yard range we zero in with the with the ammo we're going to use for hunting okay stay with that um, hunting guns are not plinking guns by any means uh, these this ammunition costs a lot of money and that's why I like to shoot in a lead sled you know, I prefer this over a bag any day. It holds it nice and steady, and you're sure to get a better zero um, with your rifle, too, with a lead sled. Okay. And notice that I don't put a towel down. Um, that way these rubber feet can grip, grip this a lot easier. Now, if I have a gun mounted on the lead sled that doesn't have recoil like a 22, then I'll put like a towel down so I can slide it better. Because it is hard to slide around, but at least when, you know, when these guns fire, they got a little heavier recoil and uh, it doesn't slip around as much if you use a towel. So, or it doesn't slip around, you know, so you want to go without a towel so it doesn't slip around as much on the recoil. All right, so there's nobody here today. Um, I'm really surprised. It's a beautiful day. We have light winds. I would say they're probably under five miles an hour and um, we're going to go up and uh, set up the GoPro and I have my spotting scope today and if you watch the first video I did uh, with the 3030 here um, you'll notice that I used the chronograph and I compared these two if you're wondering what the difference is in the feet per second watch that first video but anyway these are 100 feet per second faster than the Remington, okay, 100 feet. So that's why we had that bullet rise at 50 yards. But we'll see how we do here today at 200 yards. All right, thanks for joining me. Okay, the good news is uh, we've got a tailwind and the tailwind is really light. And it's probably, oh, I'd say now it's probably picked up a little bit. It's probably about seven miles an hour but it's coming right from behind us, which is excellent. Uh, now, let's talk about the range for a 30-30. I wouldn't take a shot at a deer uh, anything farther than 200 yards. I would stay, I would stay with, uh, that would be your max. And, but the perfect, um, range is 150 yards but if you had a chance at a nice deer you know you're just gonna like we're gonna figure out our drop here today see what the drop is but uh, I assume it's probably gonna be around five six inch drop but we'll see. Let's start out shooting the uh, Remington. All right.
let's start with that top target. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place the crosshairs right on top of the black circle. Okay, because I think it's going to be about a six inch drop. Let's try it and see here. Here we go. That's what I like about these JM stamped rifles. There's no cross bolt safety on it. You have to worry about. You don't. You don't really need it. Here we go. See how we did here. I'm going to put the crosshairs right on the bullseye. We're just above it. And I suppose I better take a look at that. Okay, stay on the top target. See if we can see any of those. Okay, we're going to switch over to the Horden D160 grain. Okay, we'll stay on the top target and see if these shoot any better here. This 170 grain, I think, had a big drop and shooting to the right, it looks like. And I'm not for sure, but we're going to stay on the top target. And I'll put the crosshair uh, just right at the top of the target there. <clears throat> Okay, that's, see that? So that was about where it hit was kind of left of the bullseye there. That's still a good shot at 200 yards. So you figure on a deer, uh, your bullseye is about eight inch diameter. So that was just left of the bullseye. And I was at the, just almost put the crosshairs right on top of the target there. So see how flat 
Now I'm, I'm about an inch, two inches below the top of the tart with the crosshairs. Now that shot high, and that was exactly where I was aiming, it was right there. So this is amazing, these Hordendy FTX 160 grain, look at that, right on that white circle at the top, and that's where I had my bullseye. Of course it had hit a little bit over to the left, I would say about a half an inch. So let's go ahead, you know, that's what I mean about the BC of these, of this ammo of Hordendy. I'm going to put the crosshairs right on the bullseye now. All right, here we go. The crosshairs are right in the center of the bullseye. Okay, so there's eight inches right here. So that's eight inch. All right. So yeah, anything in here, um, that's, a, that's considered a bullseye on the deer, especially at 200 yards. That's about a 24 inch drop right around, right around there for the 170 grain. So. Um, I still think the 150 grain, if you if you uh, pick out the, the Remington, if you go with the Remington here, these are 170, and they have about a uh, at least close to two foot drop at 200 yards. So these would be good for moose, no further than 150 yards, and then the. Uh, Lever Revolution by Hordenby. Um, they shoot much flatter. Uh, they don't have much of a drop at 200 yards, and this scope is zeroed in at 50 yards. So, um, with the Hordenby here, I was aiming. I was aiming right at the top of the bullseye here. So you can see I had bullet rise with the Hordenby at 200 yards. 160 grain. I appreciate you watching and joining me today and you know um, make sure you leave a comment down below um, and if you've done any uh, target shooting with a 30-30 at 200 yards let me know and uh, tell me what grain a bullet you like to use for deer hunting too with the 30-30 and also uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel because there's always more future content coming up and um, make sure you hit that like button and share this video with your friends too. Okay, I appreciate that. But uh, I appreciate you joining me today and watching the video. Thanks a lot.